And we're back. If I don't know if how many of you are stepdaddies out there, but we got one here today, Casey Roberts. Heck yeah. I'm glad to be here, man. Thank you. Thanks for being on. Of course, anytime. So how you been? Good. Busy. Working. Staying staying afloat. Trying to keep up with everything price wise. Dude, that's <laughs> <laughs> for real. I, I feel that really hard right now. Yeah. Actually. Especially like I went to the grocery store. I've said it on a couple, but I get like three or four things and it's like seventy bucks. Can't keep up, dude. It's and every day you go to the grocery store, you feel like you have to every day. Yeah. Because you, if you're not meal plan, you're going for every meal every day and uh-huh. can't keep up with it. And it's still cheaper than going out to eat, but dude, for real, it, it's it's pretty damn tough yeah. out here. Especially like want to feed your kids good and stuff, and feed the wife something good. But exactly, it's tough out here. But so, what are you doing now? Uh, right now, just switched jobs a couple months ago. Work at uh, Sinclair Refinery now. Ooh, so. True. Hopped on there, do the best thing I can to figure out best schedule and work life balance to stay around the family. And you know, how is that? Because it's been hard to get you on because you've been working all the time. Yep. So, like, what kind of hours do you work out at a refinery? Uh, right now, the schedule I'm on, I'm working four tens. I do six a.m. to about six p.m. So I usually get home around six thirty or so. That's so not too bad. Not too bad, but. I uh, worked all the overtime because they've been doing a lot of maintenance and stuff inside the different areas of the refinery. So I've been working lots of overtime, but typically it's a 410 schedule for me. Ooh, nice. So. How do you like the 410s? So nice, dude. Dude, I've recently Any, switched to 410s. It's so much better than yeah. working a five-day week. Any three-day weekend? Oh. Oh, yeah. It's so it, worth it. Yeah, for sure. It, it's tough getting used to that extra extra couple hours, but... At the end of the day, it's nice. A lot nicer to get used to the extra day off, though, than it is to get used to the <laughs> extra hours. For real. But uh, a lot better than your last job. Oh, what were yeah. you doing before? I've done, right immediately before it, I was delivering propane, and that was murderous, <laughs> dude. That was brutal. <laughs> Being out on the road all the time? <laughs> on the road and never stop, like, lifting. You're just 400 times, 500 times a day just lifting 50-pound propane bottles all around. <laughs> Constant workout so all day. Stupid, yeah. But Especially in the summer, 100 degrees, just <laughs> sweating balls. That sounds rough. <laughs> yeah. Bad. But I guess you're going to find out how the summer is at the refineries. Yeah, it's going to be hot. but Because yeah. we have a buddy that does it, and he always sends me Snapchats in his suit. Yeah. But Dylan makes it hard on himself. Does he? Yeah, he does. <laughs> it's an easy job. Easy job if you make it easy. Dylan <laughs> just likes to make it hard for himself. How does he make it hard on himself? Just got to keep the unit running. If you keep the unit running, you just... It just runs itself. Yeah. Come on, Dylan. He does the easy job. He gets to sit in a little little <laughs> office building and not do anything. <laughs> he's one of the higher ups now. Yeah. And yeah. We got to get him on here. See what yeah, you do. Well, he's got to say. Yeah. But anyway, how is it being a dad? You're a girl dad. Yeah. I like girl your hat, dad. by the way. Yeah, girl dad. It's it's awesome. I all my whole life. I mean, I grew up with brothers and a younger sister. Uh huh. But. Grew up like with a really close relationship with my dad. Uh-huh. So my whole life, I took myself as being like, I've always loved kids. Uh-huh. And then my oldest brother, my half brother, he has, he had a little boy uh, as I was kind of graduating high school. Uh-huh. And so I kind of felt like I was like, in a way, parenting him. Uh-huh. So I always took myself for just being like, oh, I can just rough house with boys. I can just <laughs> wrestle them. I can take them hunting. I can take them fishing. Uh huh. Everything was boy uh-huh but then obviously i met lisa uh-huh. and then we started hanging out and dating and from like the first time i met her and zinni together uh-huh. it was like oh yeah girl that is awesome it's the way to go so fun that is so awesome fun. i never thought i liked disney princesses <laughs> <laughs> just got back from disneyland it's all disney all princesses heels makeup get home from work and i get a makeover Get a makeover, yeah. have a tea party every night, and everything. Every night, you get a makeover, tea party. That's awesome. Hang out in the princess castle. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Every night. How was it going to Disneyland as like a parent? Because like, so I think, I think I've talked about it. I was at Disneyland bef- before we found out we got pregnant. And I was like, oh, man, I'd love to have like a little kid here and like be buying him everything and the ears and, you Dude, know, like it, showing him that experience. How was that? It's wild. So I'd never been to Disneyland my whole life until... Oh, wow. Three or two years ago, we took Zinnia for her third birthday. Uh-huh. We took her for her third birthday, and that was my first time experiencing Disneyland. Wow. And the first time seeing it, it's like seeing it through her eyes. So I think that for me, unless I had done it when I was like five, uh-huh. 
I don't think that there could have been a better first experience because I mean, she got, it's so exciting for her and the little kids that like, you can't match that. No. So it was awesome. And then we took her again this year and the first time we went when she was three, she wasn't big enough and she was too scared to ride the rides. She had never experienced like lagoon or anything either. Uh huh. Uh, this year though, she was like, she's tall enough for all of them except a few and she was full in on she ride everything. It? Oh yeah. Damn. Oh yeah. And she was wearing her princess dress and said that's what made her brave the whole time. <laughs> that is so <laughs> cool, awesome. dude. <laughs> she ate it up, dude. She loved it. Rode like some of the crazier ones and she had like the Matterhorn. Oh wow. She had to sit alone in the front cuz they're saying like, "Oh, the weight thing, you have to set the smallest in the front." Oh. And she's just sitting in the front alone, had no idea what to expect. Damn. Just watched a little girl scream in front of her getting on the ride. <laughs> she looked at me like terrified you're like you got this oh no (laughs) (laughs) it's awesome awesome. though it's it's so fun you can't like i said you can't match the experience of seeing them experience it and like she got a little doll like jesse from toy story man and then she saw jesse the character the actor Uh uh-huh she like looked like she saw heaven dude it was insane she like eyes just lit up and she couldn't even walk it was so funny we're like scooting her (laughs) <laughs> that is so freaking fun, cool. Dude. So like, do you geek out when you go to? Because like, especially with the little kid, I feel like you kind of have to match their energy a little bit. Be like, if they're excited, you got to show you're excited and just kind of feed off of each other. Oh, is yeah. Is that kind of how it goes? So most of the time she spent like, I mean, it's a lot of walking, especially for a little, little girl uh-huh. that, I mean, she's not used to like walking. She does like sports and stuff, but she's not used to just walking on concrete for 12 hours a day all day so for her she hop in, hops in the stroller and we just push her around so like at her level being with it that busy she can't see a lot of the stuff we can see so we have to get excited for her then show her why we're excited oh. so as soon as you say something though she'll flip the little blind thing on her stroller <laughs> off and she like looks around she's trying to find what we're looking at and she just gets so excited for it. Man, that is so freaking Then she's cool. like grabbing your hand, trying to tug you over because she wants to go get a picture or wants to go see it. Oh my it's gosh. Awesome. So how old is she now? She just turned five. So how was it going when she was three to five? What, three or five? Because like me and my wife have talked about it. I'm like, oh, let's wait till he's a little older so he remembers stuff. Yeah. So like, yeah, how was it when she was younger to now? It Huge difference. The big difference I feel like, so like three it was like she knew of everything, uh-huh. but she didn't really have like, I mean, she obviously had the capacity to remember everything, mm-hmm. but like that whole time, a lot of this movies she was seeing were stuff she was seeing for the first time. Mm-hmm. Like she hadn't seen a lot of like the old classics. She'd seen more of like Frozen, Moana, like all those kinds oh, of all shows. all the newer stuff. And, right. Okay. And so after going the first time, like I had said, I'd never even gone. So I didn't even know what to expect at Disney. Mm-hmm. After seeing everything that was there, it was so much easier to be like, oh, now we know what to get her excited for. Okay. So next time we go, she can see and be excited for everything. But she was excited the first time. Uh-huh. But we did like the second time we knew she was going to be tall enough for the rides. Uh-huh. So we spent a lot of time uh, hyping the rides up, showing her what they were. So she wouldn't get there and be like overwhelmed and want to just get off because you wait in line for an hour and a half, uh-huh. some of the rides. And then if you don't want to ride it, <laughs> you just waste an time. hour and a half. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> it, it was a lot different. The first time, like I said, we, the kids rides, like they're super chill. Uh-huh. So you don't have to prepare for anything. Second time it was like big difference because we wanted to ride the big rides, uh-huh. but she didn't have a concept of fast roller coasters or Uh anything like that. So it was just like kind of a learning curve for us to like prepare her for that. So it was a big difference, but it was a lot of fun, dude. That's pretty cool. So fun. And you went to Disney World or Disneyland? Disneyland. Yeah. Disneyland Disneyland and California Adventure. They connected right there. So we just did both of those. That's my favorite going back and forth, getting the park hopper and everything. So fun. But um, do you, does Lisa plan like the day out on like the Disney Genie or whatever? Because when we go... I feel like I'm like a passenger princess and like Drew's <laughs> <laughs> Drew's planning it all out. And I'm just like, yeah, we'll, I'll follow you wherever I go. She hates planning that stuff. Uh, thankfully, both times we've gone, my mom and my sister went with us. Oh, that's nice. And so the first time we went, my mom, when we would want to go on like one of the bigger rides, uh-huh. my mom turned like grandma mode on and she wants to 
go on the kids ride with her uh-huh. and then she's not going on those rides she's just hanging out with my sister and they're going and doing their own thing uh-huh. and so this year though it was a lot different because my mom kind of planned most of it okay she was just like and my sister has a like she had a friend that kind of helped us plan it because they go every year uh-huh. and they kind of just told us like these rides need to like you have to ride these before certain time of the day or else you're going to be waiting over an hour mm-hmm. so get there at this time and if you get there at this time you'll Tip, pretty much just walk onto the ride mm-hmm. and then you won't have to worry about going on it the rest of the day and it's knocked out so that's kind of how we planned it we just kind of let other people that had a lot more experience and mm-hmm. like time being there to just kind of tell us what to do instead of winging it because we did that the <laughs> first real. year it didn't really matter because we were just doing small rides but yeah. this year it was nice to have like some planning and some but I felt like a passenger princess. I the whole <laughs> the whole week I just told them I was like, I'm just here to push a stroller and carry stuff. For like, real. I'm Buy your some pack mule. Here yeah. and there. <laughs> I'm your pack mule. I'm not here to I'm not here for me. I'm here for you guys. But, dude, that's how I feel. I'm like, I'm just here to eat some churros, eat some snacks oh, yeah. at the different rides and yeah. go where you guys want to go. I'm like, all right, you guys go get in line, I'll go get food, and uh-huh. then I'll come back and wait in line with food. For real. <laughs> I'll, you guys wait here, I'll be right back. Nope, exactly. That's the way to do it. Heck yeah. But uh, what other trips have you guys took as a family? As a family, we go every year. We try and go visit uh, Lisa's like birth family uh-huh. in Oklahoma. So we'll go down and spend a week in Oklahoma, middle of nowhere. So it's fun <laughs> to do whatever you want. That's she just cool. That's how she got like Zinnia. That's how she got potty trained. <laughs> really? <laughs> Oklahoma. Uh, her aunt called us before we went and she told her, she said, if you get potty trained before you leave here, then this is two and a half years ago oh wow she's like if you get potty trained before you leave here i'll buy you whatever pair of like cowgirl boots you want (laughs) so we went down there and she learned to get potty trained by being in the pool and then jumping out of the pool and just peeing in the grass that is cool (laughs) hell yeah (laughs) she hadn't she hasn't had an accident since then that is awesome she didn't ever go to the like ever go to the bathroom on a toilet Uh we went to oklahoma she didn't go to the bathroom on a toilet that whole week but she hasn't gone like had a diaper since then oh my gosh see that's one of the biggest things i've been kind of stressing about I'm like God, we gotta potty train them yeah. like and i've heard girls are easier to potty train than boys so yeah. i'm kind of i'm kind of worried everywhere about, <laughs> i know i'm like dude just grab it and aim and shoot but <laughs> uh the biggest thing like for that just let them do it when they're ready uh-huh like you get so used to changing diapers mm-hmm. that like it doesn't even affect you or phase you anymore uh-huh. i'm sure you're already to that point oh Seven yeah months in like you're already to that point. Imagine two years from now when you're like, you should be potty trained. They're never going to be potty trained if you just like force it on them. Okay. They're not going to want to. You just like, when they start getting grossed out by it and it starts making them uncomfortable and they can like tell you that, uh-huh. they're going to want, that's when they want to get potty trained. Okay. So it's like on their time. That's way. Right. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And obviously like you want to incentivize it and encourage it, uh-huh. but if they don't want to, not going to. They know they have a diaper. They've had it for two and a half years, right? <laughs> for, for real. So, I mean, that's what we kind of do. We just like on her time and let that happen and it happened the way it did. And ever since then, it's been like, it was like a switch flip. It was yeah. in, from the time we went, she was, or when we went, not party trained at all. Uh huh. Time we got back, hasn't had an accident in two and a half years. Is that how it is with when they learn everything? Because like, Last week, he wasn't drinking water out of his sippy cup. And then this week, he loves water. And that's all he's been doing. So it's like kind of just like within a week, I'm like, what the hell? Like, you're a different kid. Yeah, it's 100% like that. It's two weeks ago, I would never have dreamt that she would want to do those rides at Disney. Uh huh. And this time we go, 100% different. Like, switch flips. It's overnight, too. Like, it's anything. Like, her diet, like, she only ever wants corn dogs, chicken nuggets waffles or cereal like what kid doesn't right <laughs> yeah for real so like trying to get her and then like one night she'll come home and she's just i want a taco like, what? <laughs> where, where, where did you go <laughs> <laughs> why do you want a taco yeah, where did that come from like yeah and then she'll try everything we eat and then most nights she's like i want ramen like, no no <laughs> we can't just have ramen no but it it's is like that though like once they figure it out it's just like you don't, they don't even remember what they did before. God, that's pretty it's cool. Crazy. It's cool. It's like watching a little kid evolve. It's crazy. See, that's and what I'm most happens so fast. That's what I'm most excited for is seeing them like evolve and like what piques their interest and like what they grab onto. That's what I've, I've heard. I don't, I want to ask you how that is. Like 
Have you noticed them experience something and then just like get hooked and like grab onto that? Yeah. So like a movie or like something like that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So everything she kind of does is like, she's a, she just has like an obsessive personality. Uh -huh. Like she doesn't jump ship to like hobbies or things she likes to play with. Like uh -huh. it's always been Barbies. It's always been gymnastics. And it's always been like, if we go fishing, she loves to fish. She loves to camp and like all those things, uh -huh. but she doesn't like, she's not scatterbrained. Whatever she's has in front of her is like all of her attention. All of her focus is 100% and like in that. Like, uh, we played t-ball with her last fall, last spring and fall. We played t-ball with her and my nephew. Uh -huh. They're on the same team and my brother and I coached it. And when she's at t-ball, she's like all the other kids are like running around in circles, chasing each other. And she's just like staring at the ball and like waiting for something to happen. <laughs> she's ready. Oh yeah. And then same thing like fishing. Like she just like, she'll get bored of that. Uh -huh. But when she's like in fishing like mode, she's just sit there and just stare at her pole. And you like <laughs> won't hear her talk. You won't hear her like move. You hear a pin drop. It's like, it's kind of scary. <laughs> she's obsessive over like all of that stuff. Movies, everything. You'll like be like, Zinya, Zinya. And you'll talk to her for like a minute. And then she's like, what? <laughs> she's like, I was watching the movie. I don't know what you were Holy saying to me. Cow. I'm right next to you. Yeah, <laughs> that is awesome. It is like obsessive though. She is 100% in everything. Damn. Yeah. That's awesome. That's fun. What? So you said she, you guys were playing a little bit of t-ball, little gymnastics. What sports do you guys got her in? Whatever she wants to do. I feel like kind of the best way, kind of how I grew up. I was lucky and my parents let me kind of do whatever I wanted to do sports wise. Uh, with her, we did like we've done the same thing. I don't ever want to like make her play a sport, mm -hmm. even though like I want her to play basketball. Yeah. I want her to play flag football, mm -hmm. and, like learn those things. I want her to play baseball, softball, whatever. I want all those things, yeah. but I'm never gonna like I'll introduce those things to her, but I'm never gonna like put my uh desire into like her thought process of how she would want to like approach it because uh -huh. then that's just her that's just me living through her and I can do that with anything she does yeah but I don't want to like her to do something because she was oh you have to play soccer oh you have to play football whatever uh -huh. so she's ever since I've been around them she's obsessed with like music she's obsessed with dancing so right now she does dance uh on Mondays she has gymnastics on Tuesdays Ooh. and then in the spring and fall she has t-ball on thursdays and Dang. she loves t-ball because our ne my nephew's in it and they get to be on the same team uh -huh. but she also is like starting to like it for herself uh -huh. but that's the three she's in right now is dance gymnastics and t-ball so that's pretty cool yeah and like i'm glad you brought that up like that you're not going to force her to to do anything because mm -hmm. like i you see it in the movies and shows and stuff and like you see it actually like when you coach and stuff right it's like damn that dad's just really trying to live through his kid because yeah. He didn't go anywhere, like, you know, he's trying to, like, force his kid to go further than him, and I don't know. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. I, I see people and stuff like that all the time. Like, there's a difference between my whole family has done this our whole lives, and that's, like, our passion. Uh -huh. And then my dad did this and, like, didn't get what he wanted out of it. Yep. And so now he's putting that on me to fulfill his, like... His dreams right, that right. failed. And that's what, like... Like, yeah, I played football. Yeah, I played basketball, ran track and stuff. But mm -hmm. I don't ever, like, want that for my kids if that's not what they want. Yeah, like, that's how I feel. I'm like, if you want to be a mathlete, then I'll be yeah. there cheering you on. And Hell yeah, I just... <laughs> you might be smarter than me, and I won't go to Stanford. Study, but... <laughs> for, like, go to Harvard. I don't care. That'd that's, be what, sick. Like, that's where you're going, and that's, like, the route you take. And I don't, like, I wasn't that person. Uh -huh. and I haven't been that person. Mm -hmm. I, I had good grades, and I, like did well in school, but I wasn't ever interested in being a scholar athlete. Mm -hmm. Like I just was not for me, but if my kids, that's what my kids the route they go, if they want to go to begin spelling bees, good. Uh -huh. I'll be their front row cheerleader. Hell yeah. Fine with me. Be yelling. I'd probably embarrass the shit out of them, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, at least they'll be loved. <laughs> yeah. That's 100% it, dude. I don't like, I think you kind of take on the personalities of your dad mom like mm -hmm. your parents your siblings and my like biggest role models growing up like 
my parents and my older brother. Mm-hmm. He's my half brother. He's 13, 13 years older than me. Oh wow! So my whole life, when I was born and starting to like understand things, I was like three, four, five, six was when he's in high school. Mm-hmm. So he's playing football, basketball, baseball, and he's all state and like different things. So mm-hmm. I'm watching him and sitting there and like wide eyed and like, oh, I want that. I want to be that. Uh-huh. I want to do those things. That's not something that was ever like once forced on me. That's, That's cool. obviously what my dad wanted to do. Uh-huh. But as soon as I like, he saw that I had like a sparked interest in that. Uh-huh. It turned into, oh, well, that's what we're going to do because that's what you want to do. Yeah, he Same supported you. And hunting, of... fishing, like that was stuff that was always in my family, but it was never stuff that was forced on me. My parents wanted me to do what I wanted to do. That is so cool. And that's a yeah. big thing nowadays, I think. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people forcing their kids to do stuff. I'm like, nah, yeah, that's like, not the way to do it. obviously man. scared to go out there and get the lights, the brakes knocked off and playing football. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't kill the kid. <laughs> I see that so much. I'm like, please. You're doing just... him a disservice by not letting, like, giving him the ability to protect himself. Uh-huh. He doesn't want to be there. And there's a difference between, like, encouraging him, like, oh, you got this. Like, I know you got right. it in you versus forcing him to be there and right. I don't want to be at all. Right, because anything growing up, you're probably the same way. When your mom or dad said, like, to do something that you didn't want to do, mm-hmm. what attitude are you going to do it with? Yeah. Like the worst attitude possible. You're uh-huh. gonna stand in the stand on the side with a sad face and mm-hmm. be the guy that doesn't want to participate in anything. Walk back and forth. Like there's always those kids. Yeah. Like the parents that are like, oh, I don't want my kid to be out of shape, so I'm putting him in soccer. <laughs> or then they didn't want to run in the first place. Now you put him in a sport that that's all it's that's all it is. Yeah. Is running. Of course you have you have to like introduce it. Then you have to show them why it's fun. You can't just sit here and point fingers and say, hey, this is what we do. This is why I'm telling you to do it. You can't mm-hmm. just tell them from the sideline. You can't be a like backseat coach just saying, okay, yeah, go do that. But yeah. not ever show them that you would do it. Yeah, They're never going to do anything you wouldn't do yourself. Yeah. So you can't just armchair quarterback them and uh-huh. um, 100% like up to the parent, even if it's something that they don't want to force to yeah. excite them. Mm-hmm. And, like, one thing, like, you just said, like, you kind of have to explain stuff to kids. Like, when I coach, I don't know how Zinnia is, but, like, when I coach little kids, Mm -hmm. I'd tell them something, and they're like, why? And then you'd have to say, okay, well, you need to tackle this way so you don't get hurt because of this. And they go, oh, okay. And then they'll do it. Is that that kind of how parenting, like, a toddler or someone is? Mm -hmm. Like, you have to tell them, you got to do this because of this. 100%. And it was, like, so I started being around Zinni. When she was, she was about, I met her before she turned one, but then when we started dating and like more consistently being around like all three of us together, Mm -hmm. she had turned one. So she was like barely able to form us like words to put words together and ask and tell what she wanted. So like being with her and around her, uh, kind of like a culture shock, but in a way like normal because I had seen my nephew start doing those things because he's a year older, Mm -hmm. but being around her. Like the whole transition from her like doing things because you say to or seeing things because like this is her first time seeing it mm-hmm. or whatever the case may be. But as soon as she like things start to click, mm-hmm. it's like a night and day difference and like overnight it feels like with how fast they start to like understand things. And as soon as they understand it, everything comes with why. Uh-huh. Everything comes with a question. <laughs> like go brush your teeth. Why? <laughs> Because you have to brush your teeth. <laughs> and then, well, why do I have to brush my teeth? And then you have to reason. That's when you turn into like, I could be a salesman at this point. Like you have to like sell it to them. You have to tell them why they would want to do that because you don't want this to happen or why they would do that because they want this to happen. Uh-huh. You have to like, everything like, you have to incentivize it and excite them. Because if they don't see you go brush your teeth every night, uh-huh. why do they want to brush their teeth? Like, I don't want to brush my teeth. You don't do it. Yeah, for real. Yeah. It's the same, like, it's with everything. You need to buckle up in the car. Well, I don't want to buckle up. Well, you have to. <laughs> Why? It's the law. <laughs> it's the <laughs> law. It's just a snowball effect of questions. But, Damn. I mean, I wouldn't, like, trade that. I love, like, because there are a lot of things she'll ask me I don't even know. Uh huh. And then I'm like, um, <laughs> I'll do my best to guess and then I have to go look it up and explain it more later. Hurry and, and Google and it hope real she quick. it up again. Yeah. Google it. Yeah. Kind of opens your eyes. That's what I've seen is it like does. when kids ask why, I saw, saw a TikTok and like when kids ask why you end up learning a lot more than 
you originally knew. Yeah, 100%. It's, I have learned, obviously, more about being, like, knowing things for no reason, Mm -hmm. but then they always have a reason somehow. Yeah. Like, that's why, like, I feel like I've become more of a sponge than I was when I was learning stuff I was supposed to learn in high school. Uh Then I, like, I feel like I've learned more now as a dad than I ever learned of 12 years of education or however many, like, you know, through all those years of education and from the time you're born to the time you're out of high school and college, if you go, like, get to that point. Yeah. In jobs, everything. I feel like I've learned more in three and a half, four years of being, like, a dad uh-huh. than I had learned every year before that. Like, it's it's Dang. crazy. Like, you didn't know you have, like, the capacity to obtain and store all this stuff that she's, <laughs> like, throwing at you. And, like, how to be a dad. What this sound she makes means versus this sound. Like, compartmentalizing oh everything. It's Dude, that's the hardest part. Like... Ezra will make a sound, and Drew's like, is that normal? Has he made that sound before? (laughs) I'm like, yes, I've heard the sound, like, two days ago. Like, he's fine. He's chilling. Yeah, he's breathing today. He did it two (laughs) days ago, so he's good now. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, no. Or, like, he's barely starting to learn how to talk, so he's making different sounds and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, he's fine. He's okay. And, like, I'm sure you already have, but if not, even more now. Like, you'll start hearing something, you'll hear it multiple times, and you'll be like, last time he made that sound, it was when... He had a wet diaper. Uh-huh. Or last time he made that sound, he was hungry. Uh-huh. Like you pick up on like different cries, you pick up on different like anything. Everything mm-hmm. it just clicks. It's wild. Dude, it's wild. It's kind of crazy. And like different foods he wants, or like if he wants water, if he wants his food, or if he doesn't like the food. It's weird. It's oh, like yeah. kind of crazy. They're such creatures of habit. Like my I have a niece too, so she's I have a couple nieces, but the youngest one, she's uh one and a half, or she's almost two now. But she's kind of gotten to the point as of like, it's so weird because like you'll see them, they don't talk, they don't walk, they make noises, they crawl around, mm-hmm. scoop themselves around. As soon as they can walk, it feels like they can have full conversations with you. Like it's <laughs> insane. It's like, crazy. Like you don't, you're like, last week they were walking, but or not walking, but I can't remember them not walking. And they just grow up overnight. And once they start walking, it's like everything switches and you know exactly when she comes over to like my parents' house, like mm-hmm. uh, Mimi and Poppy's, she's gonna go straight to the exact same toy. She <laughs> knows exactly where it is. They're such creatures of habit, dude. She'll be hanging out over there. When it hits about 11.30 noon, mm-hmm. it's nine night, grabs her blanket, starts walking up the stairs because she knows where her crib is. <laughs> that's crazy. Like, it's just, they are habitual creatures. <laughs> dude, that's what I'm learning is like, he has a set schedule and we cannot mess up the schedule or no. throw him all off. Like going to bed, he has a schedule and he needs to eat at this time and he mm-hmm. falls asleep and it's kind of crazy. Oh yeah. And if you deviate, they let you know. Uh-huh. They... They'll be crying all night. We dealt with that on Friday. <laughs> or like we just watched the UFC fights last weekend. Yeah. Sugar Sean fought. Yeah. We were up until like 1230 and he was not having it. Yeah. He was you guys were trying to have a good time. Uh-huh. Hanging out with all the friends, I'm sure, getting... Pounding some drinks. <laughs> oh, yeah. Watching the fights, like ordering some pizza, and he stayed awake Starts and everything. Like, no. Oh, yeah, we got home. I'm like, oh, he'll probably just go right to bed. No, he was Wishing pissed him. off, and he let us know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Trying yeah. to put him in his crib, and he was not having it. Yeah, just wait till they, come, they don't want to get in the car seat. Oh. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to it, because, like, I like to stay busy and always be going and doing different stuff right. or like, getting drinks. So we've been throwing him in his car seat a lot, and... That's going to be kind of rough when he doesn't want to do they that. Turn, you thought you could, like, tackle and wrestle and stuff in high school and get off brown people playing sports? Uh-huh. Nothing prepares you for putting a <laughs> child in a car seat, dude. It's like a wrestling match. Oh, my like gosh. Like, you don't... Obviously, they're so small. Like, if you wanted to get them in the car seat, you could put them in the car seat. Uh-huh. But you're never just going to sit there and strap them in. <laughs> like, you're not going to sit there and... Make it so your child can't move in a car seat. They're not going to force them into a car seat. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, obviously you're not just going to let them run wild in the car while you drive. Yeah. So it's like the happy medium of, like, again, exciting them, telling them why they have to get in the car seat, and then showing them, like, hey, look, we buckle. Like, you have to. Uh-huh. It's, it's a fun one, though. Yeah. <laughs> That's fun. How's, uh, how's listening to the music in the car? Like, what kind of music do you guys have to listen to? Whatever she wants. <laughs> That's what we have to listen to. Uh, usually it's Disney music or, like, worship music. Because, like, we go to church every Sunday. Uh, when she's not with us and she's with her dad, mm-hmm. they go to church every Sunday. And it's, like, 
the common religion church, like a non-denominational Bible church. Oh, that's cool. And so we have uh, her grandpa on her dad's side is a pastor. Mm -hmm. And so that she's like, not force fed that, but fed that. Like she gets a healthy dose of like being around that. And it's, that is one thing that's consistent across the board. Uh -huh. And that like we're super grateful for, because like I said, we go to church every Sunday. So it would be hard because she has, uh, she comes home every other, for every other Sunday. Mm -hmm. So she'll be here on Saturday night and next week she'll be Sunday night. So the weeks we don't have her, it'd be hard to convince her to want to go somewhere if she didn't do it when she wasn't with us. Yeah. And so that's been like a huge blessing, but it's just worship music and Disney <laughs> sing-alongs. <laughs> Is it kind of rough? Cause like we listen to his like lullabies and stuff and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm getting tired just sitting here like better. playing with them. It gets better. So lullabies are rough. That puts me to sleep. Uh huh. The Disney stuff, you're going to learn to love it. Okay. Like as much as everybody wants to say, oh, it's so miserable. Living, it's like going to Disney, living through them. Uh -huh. it, like they get so excited for it. Like you can't help but just laugh. Cause like <laughs> every time she sings it, she has a new dance move to go with the new words she learned in the song. That's and cool. she just got a karaoke machine for her birthday and on uh, Thursday night, we had a little like family party uh -huh. and she opened the karaoke machine right away <laughs> and she put on like a five song concert, full performance for us, just dancing and spinning <laughs> so cool. and oh dude, it, you'll learn to love it. That's it, pretty cool. It gets better because they don't get sleepy, obviously. Yeah. But, yeah. Geez. It's almost like having another childhood. Yeah. Kind of living through them. Literally, like you live right through them. I'm kind of excited for that, like the whole Disney thing like we've been talking about, mm -hmm. but yeah, I don't know. I was always scared about car rides and music. Yeah, we flew. I mean, to Disney we flew. That give them an iPad and a movie and. Did you guys drive? No. Oh, I was gonna say that's rough. That, that car ride would have not gone over well. I made that car ride myself and I hated it. So I can't yeah, imagine. Yeah, she's what not. Uh, before she kind of like could articulate like sentences and like tell us how she was feeling and like why she what she wanted when she wanted it. Mm -hmm car rides were brutal and like she couldn't watch stuff because she'd like stare at it and she'd get motion sick uh -huh. and then she'd start like feeling like she's gonna throw up or like start whining or like uh -huh. oh somebody jump in the back and give her a bag uh -huh. uh, but now she can like kind of monitor herself uh -huh. like if she if we're in a long car ride we don't just deprive her of things to do we give her toys and if her toys get more like our last resort is Okay, here's something to watch. Because, like, <laughs> nobody wants to just stuff their kid in front of a screen. Yeah. Like, a lot of parents do now uh -huh. just to, like, get out of doing stuff with them or doing something they don't want to be doing. Yeah. But our biggest thing is, like, if we, like, are with her for only certain days because she splits time with us, mm -hmm. all the stuff we want to do, all the stuff we feel like we need to get done, let's just do it when we don't have her. Yeah. If she doesn't want to be involved in it, mm -hmm. then we're not going to force it down her throat to involve her in it. Like, yeah, for real. So that's kind of the approach is like, let them bore themselves from something before you force them into like, oh, here, take this, just so you're quiet back there. Uh -huh. But car rides have gotten a lot better. That was the long way of saying that. Yeah. But... Dude, that's what I'm scared of. I saw a TikTok, kind of like what you were saying is, it's like, we might've been the last generation of being bored as kids, like as like nine, 10 year olds, because mm -hmm. now there's so much technology and like, how do you not have, let your kid have like a phone or tablet or, you know, some form of thing. But now we got freaking goggles you strap to your face and you're in a whole nother world. So it's like, I don't know. I'm kind of nervous about that when he gets older. And like, I think we'll try and focus on not, stuffing yeah. iPads and stuff towards them, you know? Yeah. I mean, but. it's it's easy to not, but it's also like, like what I trade the time we're living in now for another time, absolutely. Like yeah, a time sure. where there was no cell phone or iPad and where my daughter didn't know that she could come into my phone, type my password, start taking pictures of whatever <laughs> the case and start getting onto like Netflix and looking for her shows, 100%. Uh, but like having that as like, if you look at like everything around and all the stuff we have is just it being resources and different ways to kind of oh, shit. Hold on one sec. Let me see your mic. Did I turn it off? Yeah. I don't know how long that was off for. You're good. <laughs> Hopefully it wasn't off too long. <laughs> if not, you might have to.
might have creative. to cut a little bit. Yeah, uh, that's okay. But yeah, what we were saying with the whole like kids and screens and whatnot, we do everything we can to like make that the last thing we do. Uh-huh. If we are playing with her and like in her room, there's no TV present. There's no iPhone, iPad, whatever present. Mm-hmm. We want to be like 100% solely focused on Oh, let's play Barbies. Let's play Cops and Robbers. Let's. She mm-hmm. has a little gymnastics bar in her bedroom. Oh wow, and that's so cool. She'll just sit here and do flips on that all night if like we let her. Uh huh. And so, our biggest thing, like we don't want that to be a thing. But if you look at everything as a resource yeah. and a way to like give you, like obviously parents need some time too. Mm-hmm. So if we have stuff that like okay, we've been putting that off because we've been like this isn't a bad thing. We've been putting all of our time and energy and focusing it on her. Yeah. Like if there's stuff that absolutely needs to get done, like that's a resource and something we have that we can be like, okay, like Mm -hmm. give us an hour, you go watch your movie and then we'll come do something right after that. Yeah. Like the, like, yeah, it sucks. Yeah. But we can't take that away. Obviously Uh if you don't have those things, you're just behind the times. Yeah. And kind of like, setting yourself back and them uh-huh obviously i don't want my kid having a phone at five yeah. six i don't want her to have a phone until she's in high school especially but with what you can find on phones nowadays exactly. it's scary so i mean as long as we can put it off great but in ways it's like a blessing because yeah. you can use that to like promote success now there's so many like there's online schools there's mm-hmm. online curriculums because like, i was homeschooled growing up right yeah so everything we did was paper and binder have to do everything like that my uh nephew now is in kindergarten he does everything through liberty university <laughs> what the hell he does kindergarten, kindergarten through liberty university like that's what? a resource that i wish i had when i was a kid yeah because you his parents just print all of his schoolwork off give it to him he does it but they don't have to keep a like my mom has a room in our house still of all of the curriculum we had like growing oh, up and it's gosh. like a full room's worth like I don't want that. No, that's wild. <laughs> I don't want that. That's I don't have the no. capability to do that. No, like, no. I've been learning how to keep stuff organized on a computer, and that's pretty rough. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. like, especially in high school nowadays, we have a friend that is, like, a teacher there. All the kids have laptops. They issue them all laptops. And I'm like, where was this? That yeah, would have made my high that. school life so much easier. Yeah, and maybe actually teach you how to learn one of this, learn on some of these stupid computers. Yeah. I feel like I am learning a new language uh-huh. half the time I'm on a computer. I do it's too. Like, oh, a new update. I'm like, I don't know a camera could do that, <laughs> dude. <laughs> that's how I am on my phone sometimes <laughs> yeah. with the new Apple updates. Yeah, and like I was saying, sometimes when like I'll hand my phone to her, like if she's going crazy and like in line at Disney, I'll just be like, here, take pictures of whatever you want to take pictures of, right? Uh-huh. Then all of a sudden she's on a camera mode, and I'm like. I didn't, what? <laughs> I didn't even know that, that existed. That's cool. I can do that. I can use that. But yeah, it's new language every day, dude. It's kind of wild. And like, we kind of use it as a last resort and he's only six months old. Right. Mm-hmm. But he was crying the other night. We couldn't get him to sleep after the fights. He was just pissed off, just crying. And we threw on hay bear and he was like, just sat there and watched it and just stopped crying instantly. I was like, Isn't that scary. Yeah. I'm like, what the f- yeah. Like that's that's really scary but sweet at the same time. But it's scary how like they like know that. Uh-huh. Like how do they just know like this is supposed to comfort me? Uh-huh. This is supposed to just hush hush me. Uh-huh. Like, <laughs> oh, when I cry, they're just going to flip on hay bear. Yeah, for real. That's like her. She thinks that like Zinnia, she thinks that she's going to like oh, if I don't get this, I'm just going to freak out. Uh-huh. And that's the hardest part is like if you know like okay, hey, it's bedtime. But no, she wants to watch this. Mm-hmm. The hardest thing in the world is fighting her for two hours of her crying <laughs> and wanting that, but sticking to what you originally said, saying no, stick like, to your guns. That's not happening. Uh-huh. And now, if I let it happen, she's gonna do the same thing tomorrow night when it's time for bed, and she wants to watch Bluey. Mm-hmm. You know, like if you're not consistent, there's no way they're ever gonna be consistent. They can't stick to a schedule if you don't stick them to the schedule. Uh huh. So like. Every night before we go to bed, we like, okay, if your room's not clean, I don't expect you to clean your room yeah. because you spent, what, all day sitting here playing in it, right? Mm-hmm. I don't expect my five-year-old to go deep clean her room every night before she goes to bed because like we were saying earlier, that's not something she wants to do. Mm-hmm. What kind of effort or whatever is she going to put towards that? And that's just going to be two hours of 
cleaning uh-huh. on top of the whatever amount of time it took you to convince her to actually do it. Uh-huh. So it's just like incremental, right? I understand as a dad of a toddler that if we go into her room and she's got 50 things laying on the ground, she might pick up five uh-huh. and I might pick up <laughs> the rest. But the other 45 things that like I picked up, she saw me like putting my action to where like my words yeah like she didn't see me just sit here and say sit on her bed on my phone and say okay go pick that up go pick that up like she said she saw like hey we have to clean before we go to bed Mm -hmm. let's clean before we go to bed and then the next thing she knows she picks some stuff up and she has like a sense of accomplishment Uh and she's like oh shoot like we can actually do that every night and it only took two minutes yeah for real like it's not hard it's just a schedule that you have to commit to also because for me i have to be into salt lake by like six o'clock mm-hmm. so i have to go get up 4 30 get ready for work pack lunch get mm-hmm. like everything together and then get out of the house mm-hmm. so if i'm going to bed at 10 10 30 i'm only getting six hours of sleep but oh, you God, have, that sounds as a nice. parent you have to commit to that because if you're not committed to the process of keeping them up and keeping them consistent on their routine yeah then there's never gonna be a routine uh-huh so damn that's good advice don't be lazy don't be <laughs> yeah. a lazy parent don't. out there like focus help them and show them I it might that's the biggest like, thing that's like what lisa and i always say like it sucks we hate cleaning mm-hmm. but if we hate cleaning all this time and we show her that we hate cleaning and we don't do it mm-hmm. when we have to do it because eventually you're going to have to do it. Yeah. So much worse doing all of it at once versus trying to keep up on it for five days of the week, a mm-hmm. couple minutes at a time versus your, who wants to spend their whole day off tending to a dirty house? Not me. Like, I don't, I'm, I'm a clean freak. So yeah, I understand like that. Perfectly, laundry is different. Like, okay, do their laundry on the weekends. Yeah. That's fine and good. But if that's the only thing you have to do, then that's easy. That's, easiest thing in the world start a load go do what you want to do yeah come back swap it dude how do how uh do you guys make her make food at all or like make her clean her clothes or fold her clothes or anything like i saw a thing saying like you kind of got to let your kids struggle a little bit Mm -hmm. in life Mm -hmm. because then they'll grow up being like tended to i guess so to speak so like make their food when they're like hungry and you're busy or something or Mm -hmm. You know, like, hey, here's your clothes. They're clean. You need to fold them. Kind of right. kind of like what you're saying, but like let them struggle with it a little bit. Is that? Yeah, easy? there's, it's like the same as most other things. Like you have to find that balance because obviously you're not going to let a three-year-old go flick the stove on. Oh yeah, you know? of course. Like, but when she wants to, so like we don't like force her to come cook food or whatever. But uh-huh. if we're sitting there on a Saturday morning as a family and we're like, gonna oh hey let's make breakfast like let's do eggs bacon sauce whatever Uh right then we don't wake up say hey zinni go watch bluey while we make breakfast then we'll all sit down to eat together Mm -hmm. we're like zinni we don't say do you want to do this if you tell them like if you assume they're gonna do it Uh and assumptively tell them like hey like what do you want to do do you Mm -hmm. want to do the eggs the bacon or the sausage versus Hey, do you want to help us make breakfast? Mm-hmm. You only give her the options of like ways to help mm-hmm. instead of giving her a way out of it by saying, do you want to help? Yes or no. Mm-hmm. And if she says no, then you're like, well, I'll do this instead. Then you have to convince her completely otherwise. Damn. So if you just say, hey, Zinni, do you want to do the eggs? Do you want to do the eggs, hash browns, or pancakes today? Mm-hmm. And she picks what she wants to do. And then there on, she knows how to make your pancake. Now, That's cool. when you do a pancake next time, you say, hey, Zinni, you did pancakes last time. Do you want to do hash browns today? Uh-huh. And then she goes, yeah, I'll do the hash browns today. And she's over there fucking hash browns. Like, That's cool. You just have to make it, like, it's so easy to make their decision for them. Mm-hmm. And then that excites them. That's cool. And that kind of, I think that'll help them when they're older, like 9, 10-year-old, 10 10 year old, 12, like making their own food, kind of like what I was talking about. 100%. But, like, involving them when they're young and learning how to do stuff. Right, and that's with anything, like, When I was growing up, my dad, he going fishing. Mm -hmm. The first couple times I went, like, obviously I grew up fishing my whole life. The first, however long before he trusted me to like sit there with my own knife and sit there with a fish Mm -hmm. hook and all these different things. He would bait my hooks, like set my line up and all these different things. Mm -hmm. Uh, Once it got to the point of like, okay, you've seen me do it enough. 
you know how to do it. If you want to fish, like uh -huh. you're going to fish. You, and that doesn't just sit there and cast your pole. That's get your pole ready. That's mm -hmm. bring your tackle box. That's set your own everything up, like and prepare to like know everything because that's the only way you're going to be fishing is if you know how to do it. Yeah. Like he'll be fishing for 10 minutes before I'm fishing, uh -huh. but I want to fish. So if I'm not doing it myself, I'm not going to do it at all. Dude. I think that's huge. Especially nowadays. Like I catch myself, well, he's just six, but like wanting to do everything for him or like making it easy. Like, especially when he's trying to learn how to crawl, I'm like, Oh, let me just help you out. Like pick yeah. you up, you get know, you a little it's quicker, like, get you there a little quicker. Yeah. It's like, no, you gotta kind of let him learn. Cause there's no other way he's going to learn right. or, you know, yeah. whatever child. Oh yeah. So any, I find myself doing that. Any like adversity they can face the, like it, like you said, it's the hardest thing to sit there and watch them <laughs> struggle with something like but you'll see it as they start to get bigger. If it's something that like they want, uh -huh. they're going to exhaust every option and figure out how to do it themselves. Uh -huh. Like if he can't crawl, he'll use the ball. He'll use his toy, whatever uh -huh. he has near him. Like they're going to connect the dots and figure that out as a resource to like yep. get them to do something. And that happens like quick. Like you're going to see like, and once they figure it out once they just know. And mm. it kind of like, like I said, like that sense of accomplishment, like mm -hmm. whether they acknowledge that like, oh, I accomplished this or not, mm -hmm. it, you can just see it click. Cause in the next time they do it, you're like, that makes so much sense. Like why they can do it. Cause yeah. like when we played sports growing up, right. Mm -hmm. How did you know what mesh point to hit on a read option? So you did it a million yeah. times, mm -hmm. right. And then and once you, you see it work, you're like, oh yeah. You're like, okay, now it makes sense why my guard and tackle are kicking and everybody else down blocking and there's one-on-one -on -one with the safety, whatever uh -huh. linebacker, like it all makes sense to them the same way that that makes sense to us. Yep. When we see like a project we do come together and we're like, Oh, okay. So that's why I did all the stupid little framework on this door mm -hmm. just so that can sit here and swing open and shut. And that's like the most effortless mechanism for the, like that. Yeah. But it clicks the same way in their brain. As soon as they crawl once they're like, Oh, this whole time I only had to put one arm underneath me and push. You're like, like, oh, that's I got stupid. this. Yeah. And from there, it's just like goes into walking. Then yeah. it goes into using like hand-eye coordination then so on and so forth. It's crazy, dude. dude that's so cool. Cause like I, I see what he, what you're talking about. He's starting to like pull himself now. Mm -hmm. Like he can't crawl and he's still on his stomach, but he'll grab something and pull himself forward or something. Right. And then like he'll start pulling stuff under him Uh huh. and then he'll like push on it. And he'll start crawling over it. And then he's like, okay. So mm -hmm. when I'm pushing on stuff, I just have to have my arms under me instead of an object. Yeah. And like, that's how they start crawling. And once they start crawling, it's just consistently just next step, next step, next step. Dang. And like, least in, like less and less things that help them move. Mm -hmm. and like once they start rolling over off their tummy, has he started like yeah, he'll flipping roll. over? Yeah. And he does it so quick. We'll put him down on his back and he'll flip <laughs> over to his tummy and then flip back and like halfway across the room. Uh huh. What? It starts rolling everywhere. I'm like, what the hell, dude? Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Stay. Yeah. Like that's things with like Zinni. She'll do something and like, it like freaks you out. You're like in her little gymnastics bar. She'll sit there like the first day she, she got it on Christmas, mm -hmm. uh, by n Christmas, like end of Christmas day, uh -huh. it was like middle of the next day, probably. We had Lisa's uh, brother and his fiance staying with us. Mm -hmm. And I had showed her like a bunch of tricks. I used to do gymnastics when I was like 10. That eight, makes nine, sense 10. now why you have such good footwork. And so like <laughs> I was like used to that stuff. So I'd show her stuff that like they taught me when I was little. But stuff that she could obviously do. So uh -huh. like pretty like like easy to grasp concepts of things to do for her. Uh -huh. And she just immediately could do them. And I was like. Wow gosh dang like she'd been in gymnastics so like it wasn't like new to do gymnastics stuff or see a bar or whatever mm -hmm. but to be able to just do it right away was insane and then uh the next day after christmas i worked and uh, i got home and she was hanging out with lisa and her brother and uh, his fiance and she's like dad come here and i was like okay I walk into her room. I thought she was going to show me like something they set up that she got for Christmas or whatever. Mm -hmm. she, she goes sprinting to her room, just grabs the bar on the way by and just like almost flipped over it. <laughs> shit. And I was like, I drug the bar halfway across <laughs> the room. I was like, you are going to kill yourself on this thing. <laughs> You're like, you need to be careful. Yes. And then she like flips her legs up, is hanging by her, like her knees, backs of her knees. 
puts her hands down and like does a flip off of it. What the and I was heck? like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I like to walked into Lisa's uh, into our bedroom and I was like, our neighbors are going to murder us. Like they're <laughs> going to hate us downstairs. Her third floor, it's just boom, boom all day. <laughs> That's awesome. And as soon as she gets home, beeline straight to that thing. Damn. And she's just flipping. Like you'll walk in there and she's standing on it. <laughs> I'm like this is not a beam. Like, you're like we need to get a mat if you're gonna be doing. She this. has a little one, but it's not <laughs> not big not enough. enough. We need a bubble wrapper. That's funny, dude. I I've, I've heard that like kids are better at learning stuff because they don't have any fears. Yeah. Like on snowboarding, doing gymnastics, stuff like that, and like. I feel like we got to, you know, as dads take that into our life a little bit. Yeah. It's like we golf, mm-hmm. you know, and you'll see the water and you get scared a little bit and then you mess up because you're scared you of hitting the water. Yeah. Whereas like kids, those, I've seen kids step up to a putt, nail like a 90 foot putt. And I'm like, how the, f-? just because yeah. they don't know the consequences. They're right. like, oh, they don't know anything else. Uh-huh. Like, they don't know what they don't know. Uh-huh. They're just like, oh, well, I've never like seen anybody fail at this or this hurt anybody. Uh huh. Jump into it. Oh I think that's like a huge thing too, though. Like. As like dads, parents, it's like our biggest job is to not instill that fear into them. Yeah. Like I get it if it's like, okay, like I'm scared of snakes. Uh I'm scared of spiders. Like whatever. Like, okay. Like that's different. Like those are just small little things that they'll get over whatever. But like who wants to like instill into their kid that they should be scared to go to a new school, that Mm -hmm. they should go make new friends that they should go talk to an adult, even though they're just a little kid. Like yeah. those are all fears that we as like dads have to like show them like, like they can't, we can't tell them to do something unless we walk the walk too. Yeah. Like if we can't go up and talk to somebody new, yeah. if we can't go start a conversation, make new friends, uh, not be scared to take like a leap of faith. Like you've switched jobs like yeah. a couple of times in the past, like couple of years. Mm-hmm. So have I like, it's terrifying. Yeah, like it is. Meet new and people. I, and <laughs> yeah, at least, and Lisa and I got a new apartment. Like, not just terrifying for, uh, like, interactions with new people and all these different things. It's scary because, like, mm-hmm. you're a provider. Like, that's what your job is as a dad. Yeah. Like, you provide for your family. If you can't provide for your family, what are you, like, what are you doing? Yeah, exactly. And obviously, there's, like, stepping stones to that. Like, I'm not in the job or position at my job where I'm, like, capable of just solely providing for my family yet mm-hmm. but like i'm not scared for that reason because i've put myself in a like company and job like position wise where mm. i know that in by the end of this year even possibly like i could be in a position to like make it so my wife never has to work again yeah as long as you apply yourself and you're not scared to learn the new things you're not scared to be the boss right. you know make enemies at work so you're the boss because you know right. if you're boss people aren't going to like you it's just kind of yeah but i think there's like a the, the disconnect between the boss and like the employee is like so large mm-hmm. but you have to like same thing as everything else if you can make like it's like if you treat being a boss because i was a boss when i worked at like other jobs right mm-hmm. if you treat being a boss like you treat them like toddlers i know it sounds like very like <laughs> like talking down at them type stuff if you tell them and give them the choice of what they want to do. Mm-hmm. It's like the easiest thing in the world. Yeah. Like I was terrified to become a boss. I was a manager at Carvana and like, yeah, we had a lot of kids that were just graduating high school. So they're like fairly impressionable, mm-hmm. but like, so am I, I was yeah. 23. You're like, still learning yeah, how to I'm do still everything. Learning things. Like I don't, I'm 22, 23. I don't know like anything. Uh huh. And then I have to come up with ways to convince 30 people to do a job that I don't do, but mm-hmm. I did before, but I have to convince them to do it because now I'm their boss. Yeah. And if I can't like show them that I would do it or give them reason to do it, uh-huh. why do they want to do it? They yeah, don't. Exactly. So it's like being the boss, like it's a huge leap of faith and it is scary. Mm-hmm. But if you look at everything on like, if you can like minimize everything and kind of like downplay it, mm-hmm. not to other people, but for yourself. Yeah it's an easy way to like bridge that gap of fear and then just like action. Yeah. Cause like I said, if you just go up to them and same way I do with my daughter for breakfast, do you want to cook this, this or this? Yeah. Okay. There's 15 spots on this production line that we have to fill. Everybody's capable to do every slot. Mm -hmm. I'm going to like tell this person say, Hey, you did this yesterday. Do you want to do this, this or this today? Yeah. And when they make the choice, 
they're the only person that they can be mad at is themselves. Yeah, because they made the choice right. to be there. They, you can't sit there. Like, that's why it's like, as a boss, you want to train everybody to do everything because mm-hmm. then they feel more valuable. Mm-hmm. They feel like they're not just a disposable, like, oh, hey, you don't want to be here? We're going to fire you today and have somebody in your spot tomorrow. They feel like they have, like, a sense of pride in their work. Yep. And then they, obviously, they take pride in their work. Your work's going to get better mm-hmm. make you look good. And then everybody's like, oh, your facility and your portion of the facility is the only one that runs this way. What did you do? Yeah, for real. Just let them do what they want. Yeah. <laughs> Be a good made person make, still. I let them and made them make their own decisions. Yeah. Like, Dude, that's what I found thing. out was being a boss. It's like, you don't want to talk down to them and no. like kind of be a dick. If you so. can't be relatable, you yeah. never, nobody's ever going to want to work for you. Yeah, for real. Every and person, everybody has a boss that they hate yep. and have hated mm-hmm. and don't want to work for, didn't want to work for. And that's, they'll say management's why I left my last job. Yep. I hated my last job because of this, like mm-hmm. your company got bought out, right? Yeah. Managers switched over. They came in and they said, all right the hell with all of you yeah like it's pretty messed up (laughs) i've worked here for five years and now i'm just out of a job because you didn't like us Mm -hmm. quick way to make no friends it was pretty messed up yeah i remember that whole thing that was horrible i was like but i was like "Mm, screw all you (laughs) and for you like you had moved to up into that company where you were from the bottom like Mm -hmm. you didn't just start in that position no i just started picking phone cases like Right. Look at a paper, you go pick a phone case, anybody could do it. Yeah, you know? exactly. And that's like the same when I was at Carvana. I started as like low man. They literally came up to me the first day and said, hey, I know we know you didn't have any say in what position you got hired at, mm-hmm. but this position is the only position that kind of doesn't have a chance to like move into management. That's what they oh, told sh- me the first day. <laughs> Damn. I looked at them and I was like, okay, well then how do I get into management uh-huh. or how do I move up? And they're like, it's going to be really hard. That's literally all they said. And I was like, that's, that's like ridiculous. I was the second person in the hiring class to get promoted. Dang. And the only person that got promoted ahead of me was somebody with like 10 years experience in the field already. Wow. and was like 35, 40 years old. And I was like 22. Because you know how to apply yourself. And it's you like, know how to do hard things. I wasn't the person that was like, I was, the, I'm okay with failing. Yeah. I'm okay with being the person that like, does it wrong mm-hmm. because okay i did it wrong next time now i know what not to do mm-hmm. like nobody's if nobody's willing let, let themselves fail yeah nobody's like willing to just put themselves out there in front of people because they've grown in like we've grown into this society like that's afraid of like failing they have this like insane fear of just looking bad in front of somebody else on social media mm-hmm. or Oh, if I do this and there's a camera on me, there's a good chance that million people are going to see it. Yeah. I can't look this way because I have to be with these people every day. If I did it wrong, I'm never going to hear the end of it. Mm-hmm. I have never cared about that. Bro, I don't care about that. I don't care about looking like, dumb. I've been yelled like, at by my parents, by <laughs> my football coach, by basketball coaches, by uh-huh. everybody around me. Uh, like My parents... When I wasn't with them, if we got babysat, whatever the case, yeah. my grandparents were my parents. There yeah. was no like difference between like authority mm-hmm. from my grandparents, my parents, coaches, like across the board. My parents were like, you're his coach. You're his dad. Yeah. Like you do this the same way that we would do this. If he's not doing something right or if he's over there, like not doing what he's supposed to be doing or if he's talking over you or yeah. disrespecting you, you treat him like that as your kid mm-hmm. and he will do what you say. And if he won't tell me and he won't be back. Dude, I had a dad tell me that when I was coaching, I was like, thank you. Like you're the best kind of parent right, to have. the scariest thing to like <laughs> is. get told. Yeah. Cause you're like, mm, you're like, I'm not going to yell at him. Like <laughs> yeah. he's my kid, but thank you. Like right? you're like, you're not going to yell at me for making him run. I know I can't talk to you like you're my kid, <laughs> but like you start to like take on the, uh, joy and like satisfaction of them succeeding and stuff mm-hmm. like that too. So mm-hmm. it's like, you start to feel like they're your kid. Yeah. But I don't know. I just think that we've created it though. Like our, I feel like our generation's parents are the ones that kind of were introduced first to the like, Oh, phones, convenience of phones, convenience (laughs) of this, convenience of that. Uh, here, here's social media here. Here's YouTube. You can like, let's just put this on and it's going to autoplay the next video. Uh Well, you put on like, some dinosaur documentary, right? For mm-hmm. your son. Well, the next video that plays is something saying like the video of someone failing at something and everybody mocking him. 
Yeah. Okay, well, now he's immediately just been introduced to a fear that he would never have had if his parents would have been more attentive and more, like, involved in what he was, like, seeing, yeah. being fed. And I think that's, like, something that we've created. Like, we created this fear in all of, like, us even. Mm-hmm. Like, there's stuff that I'm like, oh, shoot, I don't want to do that. But then I'm like, <laughs> why the hell am I scared to do that? Like, Dude, yeah. this is an, just part of my job. Like, yeah. The other day at my work, we were cleaning out the inside of a tank and like, it's a tiny area. Like nobody really fits in it. Mm-hmm. Nobody fits in this area. You have to squeeze yourself into it. And then like, as soon as you get in there, like there's dust and stuff. So you can't see anything mm-hmm. pitch black. And uh, <laughs> like you immediately start to feel claustrophobic. It sounds and so scary. We have a kid there. That's like, I was like, props to you. Like he wanted to do it. He like, I'm going to do it. Yeah. He got in and like, he the whole time he's like said he wanted to do it but would like tell me he's like dude i'm like freaking out i'm like (laughs) you don't have to prove anything like there's a difference between like being scared and then just knowing like your limits yeah like there's like nobody's gonna say anything to you about not doing it like oh he's a chicken whatever Uh they're gonna be like okay yeah that's like i get that right yeah they're gonna respect you more for just being like no i'm not doing that yeah for they are for you to like do it just to say you did it and then get out and be like, Oh yeah, like oh, it was not bad. Yeah. So he got in and immediately just started like hyperventilating, like hops out. I mean, you can't like turn, you're stuck on your side, stuck on your arm. And like, I don't have a fear of tight spaces, but like Lisa does. And uh-huh. like, you can see when they like, when that switch flips, you can't bring yourself back. Yeah. You that- can't, pull your you can't rein, you can't rein it in you can't like reel it in it's mm. not a thing that's just easy to just oh, oh i'm fine yeah you can talk yourself out of it once you're like out of the area or even sometimes in it uh-huh. but if you're not used to that dude you, it's a different mindset because like i watch those caving videos and i my hands get so out. sweaty when i'm, I'm not watching claustrophobic those. but i'm not stupid i'm not going in those yeah i'm not dumb <laughs> so i'm not claustrophobic anything that pops up on those i look at my i watch my phone like this <laughs> i'll close too. an eye i'm like i eat I'm like, holy shit. I hate that. It stresses me out so bad. Dude, me too. But like on that on that kid that like got nervous and like started hyperventilating and you got to pull him out, yeah. it looks worse to be like Freak. doing that than saying, I ain't going in there. Oh, yeah. You know? Because like, then you just wasted time going in and having to pull out and then find someone else to do it. Like, just be like, no. I don't yeah, know. If there's a cave or something you want to see, just watch the video. Someone's videoed it before. Yeah. Watch, watch some GoPro <laughs> footage of just some dude getting stuck. There's videos of everything. I mean, like that whole nutty putty. You, you ever, like you heard when they closed that off, right? No. Don't. Like, <laughs> basically, there's a whole section of the cave that's like super tight, really hard to explore. The reason they shut that edge of the cave off is because some guy got into like that area, mm-hmm. but took a turn that he wasn't supposed to and was like, oh, he like, the illusion of the cave in front of him kept making him think that like it got bigger ahead of him. It got bigger ahead of him. So he kept getting in further and further. And I don't remember the exact dimensions, but like, I think it was like, it might've been a little bigger, but it was like 14 inches wide by like eight inches tall. Oh, I'm like, good. can you, how do you fit shoulders through that? I couldn't. And he got to a point where he was facing this way. Like he had gone like over and almost back. Oh. And so when they tried to pull him, his like rib cage was getting caught on stuff. I'm good on that. Yeah, dude. I that don't, sucks. I don't know. Like, I, when they're like, I have to breathe, I have to exhale to move an inch forward. I'm like, that, that you shouldn't be doing that, dude. They had to, <laughs> they tied, they could see his feet. So they tied ropes to his feet and were trying to pull him. But like, it was putting so much like pressure on his legs from like that turn. And then they would pull him. And then as soon as they'd be like, oh, he's in too much pain, they'd let go on his head. Yeah, and he just kept going further and further in, and like, did he die? Yeah, they had to. I'm pretty sure they ended up like giving him like lethal injection because they oh couldn't get him out. And then they, uh, he was with his, I think he had his like wife or fiance there, and she was outside the cave, and they were they were there with him, like him and his brother were going in. They were like the guy was from Stansbury, and Damn. uh, was it a couple of years back? No, it was like. 20 years ago i think 10 years ago i think i remember that actually happening i think my principal knew him or my principal was there at the time yeah he is like he was a student at byui he came home for thanksgiving break him and his family like had gone into caves they went into this cave like oh just like any other cave he got stuck their dad had been stuck like three times before in different caves and like had gotten out so they were like when he got stuck at first they were just laughing they're like 
this is just going to be another like cave recovery story. Like us getting out of one, even though dad's got like, we always get out. Uh huh. And then his brother was the one that was right behind him. And then his brother had to turn around, go tell them like, Hey, he's stuck, get medical crews. He was there for like, like a day plus. Dude. I couldn't even imagine that. That's insane. Terrifying. That's, that's awful. Yeah. Caves are, yeah. But the whole fear thing, like, those types of fears I understand. Yeah. If there's been something that's forced or like put that fear mm-hmm. on you, that's different. Yeah. And sure, his parents did a good job by not making him afraid of those places and afraid of those things. But it's almost like blind confidence in a way too though. Yeah. Like you can't that dumb confidence. Yeah, you can't like set them up for success, but so much to the point where it's like you just gets taken too far. Yeah. Like those are those same like with the guys that do stunts for Red Bull. They're jumping out of planes with no parachutes and like, okay, it. hey, hopefully you can catch up to me and <laughs> grab me and strap your parachute to me. If yeah. not, bye. Hasta luego. I'm <laughs> good, no, dude. That sounds awful. That, that's not that's not that the way sick. to bridge that. No. Like you can be not afraid of things, but you can also To a point. Yeah. You can also understand that life's more valuable than yeah a viral video yeah like you could take l's you could definitely take losses and you know look like an idiot here and there but don't nothing, nothing better for you than not that, life though. or death nothing's better for you than taking l's yeah like, i i saw a kanye thing on tiktok he's like you don't learn from winning you don't learn from having a perfect life you right. learn from losing you learn from you know like trying something and it failing mm-hmm. you learn more from that actually than like having a perfect life yeah it's not perfect and i was I can't agree more, honestly. And like watching kids crawl and like, they're not going to learn by you helping them. You know, they're going to learn from failing or falling on their face a little bit and go, okay, I don't want to do that. Right. And like with that, I mean, it's the same thing. Like they don't stop falling on their face. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't stop falling on their face when they're like two, three, Mm -hmm. four. I mean, Zinni, she does stuff now. And like, it's to the, like we've, I would say like we've done well with her to the point where if she does like fall, like both literally and like figuratively in the sense of like failing, Mm -hmm. like we don't like shame her for that. It's like a good thing. Mm -hmm. Like it's like, Oh, well if you fail at it now, I'm going to give you the resource of how to do it. I'm not going to do it for you, but I'm going to be like, okay, I could have told you this before, Uh but I'm not, I'm, I didn't because I wanted you to figure it out, but now you failed at it. So now I can say, Hey, instead of what you just did, try Mm -hmm. this. Here's a tip. Right. Now she's like, okay, but you don't just say, here's the answer to the test, right? You say, here's like a better way to try it. And Mm -hmm. then they try it again. If they fail again, okay, then you give them a little more and you just keep going that way. And then like the physically and like literally fall, like if they fall, she's to the point now where like she'll fall and like things hurt, right? Mm -hmm. You can hear it hurt. (laughs) She'll fall on her scooter, her bike and like smack you can like hear bone smack Uh and you just like cringe but she looks at you to see if she's okay Uh like she doesn't just like get hurt she's like did that hurt me like looks at you good and you're like you're okay get back up and then she's just like brushing it off and like climbing back on her bike (laughs) and you're like god that one did hurt (laughs) that one did hurt that would have hurt me that hurt me (laughs) yeah that hurt me through you so i mean that's the biggest thing like in football like i don't know when i was playing I'd always get hurt, and it's just like you kind of just got to get up and walk it off. Because my dad instilled in me like, "Oh, you're not hurt. Like, get up." Oh yeah, you know, dad, and like your dad wasn't. You're all right. Hurt. No, <laughs> I broke my <laughs> collarbone, and he's like, what f- "Why are you yeah. getting up so slow?" And I was like, uh, "I think my, I, my bone's poking up." And he's like, "Oh, <laughs> like, you're fine." Like, I don't think I am. It was like, like I walked off the field. He's right, like, maybe you're not. What the hell are you doing? What, like, why are you walking <laughs> off? Why aren't you running off? I was like, my, I don't know. My bone kind of hurts. Yeah, it's the same thing. Like. Like obviously we were on the same football team senior year, right? Uh-huh. Uh huh. We played at Judge High School, and that game like broke my ankle. Uh huh. And I kicked and punted and like that you're running insane. back, cornerback, like returning, whatever the case. Like I played, I was on the field like mostly the whole game, right? Ninety five percent of the so time. So if I wasn't, it was because it was halftime or quarter break or something, right? Mm-hmm. So I mean, I was so used to like just exhausting everything in my body everything always hurt Mm -hmm. and so when i got my ankle rolled up on i was like okay that's a different hurt (laughs) than like i was hurt then it's like as soon as i was laying there the first thought that went through my head when i like stood up to try and walk and just dropped i was like 
Clint is going to murder me. and He's going to grill me for being hurt because he always made fun of Leo's team. <laughs> Leo, I forgot about Leo's team. He's like, I was the fr- I'm just laying on my back staring at the stadium lights and I'm like, I'm going to get made fun of by Clint. Like my coach <laughs> does not give a damn that I'm sitting here on my back with a like hurt ankle right now. I'm like, does he? And I'm like, no, he really doesn't. It's like, thank goodness it was almost halftime. Got it taped up. Uh, the tape was like, made it so tight because it was obviously starting to swell. Uh huh. It was like by the third quarter, middle of the third quarter, the tape was ripping. Like it was swelling <laughs> so bad. And he was still making me kick off and punt. <laughs> I'm like, see that? He did not care. Yeah. And uh, the next day, I was like, okay, I've just put ice on it. I was like, I'm fine, trying to convince myself that I'm fine. Uh huh. The next day, like it didn't hurt when I woke up and I had forgotten about it. And I like roll out of bed, step off my bed, and just drop to the floor. Damn. My mom's like, we're going to the doctor. So we go to the doctor. <laughs> they tell me it's broken. She hands me a doctor's note and says, hey, this is like doctor's note. You need four to eight weeks off. Uh-huh. And hands it to me. And my mom, we were walking out, and the doctor's like, you need crutches? Here's a brace. Do you need crutches? And I was like, absolutely not. I don't want crutches. She's like, I'm good. And uh, we're walking out, and she's like, here's a brace. I threw the brace on because it did help. Yeah. And we're walking out, and as we're walking out the door, I threw the doctor's note in the trash can. <laughs> You're like, I don't need <laughs> my this. My mom's like, what are you doing? And she got so mad at me, and I'm like, I, I don't want that. I don't want to be the guy that doesn't do yeah, anything. But then for real. Same thing, like, everybody's saying, like, oh, you're not hurt. I never told him I was hurt. I told him that it got hurt and I went to the doctor Uh and they said that like, yeah, I should probably have some time off. But I said, I don't want time off. So like me putting that and giving that to him. Anytime I said like, if I ever said, oh, hey, like I want, I need a rep off. My ankle hurts. Uh He'd be like, you said it didn't hurt. Like, yeah, you're right. (laughs) You're like, yeah, I didn't. eh? You're right. So I can't be hurt now because I told him I wasn't. So I had to finish the season punting and kicking and everything. Damn, I see. And I didn't even know it was broke. That's I, insane. There were times he's just like, if you need to, like Leo would tell me, he's like, if you need to, just don't practice this week. Uh-huh. I'm like, you expect me not to practice? Then tell the back, the guy that's my backup, like, oh, hey, by the way, you were starting all week in practice, but you're not starting today because I'm just playing games. Damn. Hell no. No. I wouldn't. That's, I would never do that to somebody. Yeah, for real. Like, I will limp around practice all week all season to like earn respect and like for myself Mm -hmm. tell myself like okay if you're gonna say you're this then you have to prove that you are yeah for real so it was like that was like a huge thing because that healed for i didn't get all the way healed until like three four weeks into track season dude you're insane i can't even imagine that because like so I broke my collarbone my freshman year. My dad yeah. yelled at me. That kind of instilled that into me, you know? Yeah. Kind of like what you're going on. And then I broke my ankle junior year. I wish you would have broken it before <laughs> our game against Stansbury freshman year. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's when I broke it was yeah, against you guys. After you embarrassed us that game. <laughs> Dante landed on it. I was like, holy shit, bro. And it broke. And uh, That's fine. You're probably up 49-7. It, it was like 49-0. Yeah. And, <laughs> but like... I didn't want to show anybody I was hurt, so I'd walk around and I'd see people from Stansbury. I'd throw the sling off. I was like, oh, no, that's cool. Right. They'd be like, you hurt? I'm like, nah, I'm right. good. And then, like, as you get older, though, you realize how stupid you were. Oh, right? that's so stupid. It's, like, dumb. I don't know if that's why now, but, I like, it's hard to throw. Like, yeah. It makes it hard, like, okay, I'm not going to be able to use this arm the same way. My ankle, anytime it gets cold outside, like, cripples. Dude, mine gets like, sore. It starts to ache, and I have to, like, I have to, like warm it up for a while. I have to, like, mm-hmm. massage it. I'm like, I... It's not just like if I'm gonna use it. It's like to walk, dude. It it's gets like it sore. hurts. Like it will start to get cold outside, and I'll be like, when I was working before, like I'll be like in the truck, and I'll be sitting here, I'm like rubbing my ankle. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I gotta convince myself that I can just go walk. Yeah, for real. It's stupid. You're like, like you're good. I should have taken time off, but I didn't. I even took time off and got it surgically fixed, and it still hurts. Yeah. But like when I broke my ankle, I was like laying in the pile, and I heard it snap. I was like, this hurts really bad. <laughs> <laughs> and I was That's like, okay. my dad's on the sideline. He's going to yell at me if I don't get up. I got up, fell, and started hopping off. And I was like, I can't put any weight on this. But that's, I don't know. That's Nature dumb. of the beast. Nature of the beast. I mean, Nature of the beast. Up for it. Yeah, exactly. Wouldn't trade it, though. No, never. But we're we're coming close to the end. I got to put Ezra down for bed. Yeah. I just got one question. Um, Kind of like for all the stepdads out there, someone that's getting into a relationship with mm-hmm. Um, a significant other that has a kid. How was that experience for you? Getting into like being a stepdad. Yeah, be, getting into a serious relationship. 
when Lisa already had a yeah. kid. So How was that for you? For me, I I wouldn't have traded. I felt so like obviously, you know, like when you're single, you talk uh-huh. to not just one person until you find someone that like, oh, okay, like I want to like talk to just this person, uh-huh. right? At 20 years old, would I have ever thought that I would have like the one person I would have talked to would be someone that has like a one year old already? Absolutely not. Mm-hmm. And it was when I was 20 that we were talking. Like, I've been blessed in like the case or in this sense of like I had family like my whole family and stuff growing up has always been like kid people like mm-hmm. we've loved kids nephews nieces grandkids like my parents grandkids like friends and family around us that have kids babies like I've always been a kid person mm-hmm. so like it was not scary for me at all like yeah. for me it was like a bonus like I uh, from the first time we all hung out like we hung out uh, seeing things like from a kid's perspective is so fun and like so exciting yeah and so going into it i didn't have any like you can't cast like any judgment on it you can't like let the situation be something it's not until it is that yeah. like if it is that great you saw that it was that remove yourself from it whatever the case may be for you mm-hmm. for me it was like okay like i was like i didn't want to be the guy that she brought and introduced to her kid and then i'm the guy that immediately was gone yeah right so like it was a long time of Lisa and I hanging out before I was even okay with it. Not because I wasn't okay with the kid or uh-huh. Zinnia, but it was like the fact that I didn't want to be like for her not saying she would have ever done that, like just bring multiple people around. Yeah. But for like me and to like respect her, I was like, I don't want to like be around Zinnia unless you see a future with me Yeah. and I can see like a future with you being okay with like having a kid at yeah. 20, 21, whatever. Uh-huh. Right. And so for me, knowing who was her dad, like knowing him growing up and like he and I always like never, we weren't friends, but mm-hmm. we were like, just knew each other to the point of he respected me. Mm-hmm. I respected him. I didn't want to come in and take over being a dad. Yeah, I didn't ever come in saying like, Oh, he's a bad dad. I know he's, a good dad to her like she would make it clear if she thought he was a bad dad zinnia would yeah and so she can see things on her own she can figure out things on her own until i have a reason to believe he's not i think he is yeah and so if you come into it with like open mind and kind of just like okay hey this is like good thing it's a good thing she they're obviously not together yeah her parents so i need to be like the next best thing while she's not with her her dad she needs to have a dad that either matches her real dad or exceeds that mm-hmm. and like i have to be that so i couldn't like go in halfway and say one foot in one foot out like i'll be your dad but like i don't want to step on toes like i didn't come in and saying i'm only gonna do this i came in like full bore yeah. i'm gonna parent you how i want to parent you but i'm not gonna step on the toes of your real dad yeah. if he has a problem with something i do he would tell me. He mm-hmm. would come and talk to me and say, hey, don't do this uh, because we do it this way at our house. And then we could either find like common ground and say, well, let's try it this way. Mm-hmm. Or if his way was like just as good, just different, do that. Yeah. So they have like her parents have a good relationship now. So it's for me, like I said, I've been super blessed and it's fun because she gets excited like birthdays. She gets four grandparents, <laughs> two sets of parents, like 10 uncles and aunts, like yeah. It's all fun. So, I mean, for me, I think that being a stepdad is the best thing in the world. I love it. That's freaking cool. That's and, awesome. And it's fun, too, because like I told you, like I have a nephew. And they're this a year apart. Yeah. It's like watching them be little best friends like I was with my brother growing up. Uh-huh. It's like having a sibling, even though she doesn't. You yeah. Know? It's awesome. That is freaking cool. Yeah. That's awesome. That's yeah. I've always wondered that because, like, we're playing football and this and that, and, like, we're hanging out at that time and like seeing you become a dad was from the outside was pretty damn cool. Right. And like, and like seeing you mature, even though we're not the closest like friends, you know, like I felt like we were pretty close, but it's like seeing you mature just every time I saw you was, that was pretty damn cool. And it's crazy to see like financially, uh, emotionally, like everything changes and like, you don't feel it or see it or hear it. And like, you can even just look at a picture Mm -hmm. of like me, for example, if I see a picture of me like camping and, like Lisa and Zinni in like 2020 I'm like 
how like weird or 2021 like how weird i felt like in that moment Uh looking at it now is like why was i like feeling that way like why there was never a reason they never gave me a reason to be like like oh tell zinni she can't do this like Uh i was like i don't want to step on lisa's toes Mm -hmm. and now it's like lisa respects how i parent zinni Mm -hmm. i respect how she parents zinni and then we parent her the same and like you said when we were hanging out it was like I can feel myself maturing whether I like wanted to step back and be like, Oh, like I'm figuring it out or not. Mm -hmm. Like I never want to say I figured it out. Yeah. But then you hear people say like, dude, you're like, that's awesome. Like I Mm -hmm. like respect that, you know, that's like, like, okay. Like work's being put in, it's being acknowledged and it's paying off. Yeah. So like, those are, that's awesome. I love that. So, well, that was the coolest thing. Cause like you're saying, like I saw you mature and everything, but like, a lot of guys our age at that time, you know, like, oh, I went to talk to a girl, but she had a kid. And, yeah, no one's thinking of yeah, like, like that. Yeah, like, ah, I'm good. And so, like, seeing you be mature already enough to be like, you know, you took your time and your due diligence, like you're saying, and everything, mm-hmm. but then you went full in when you want, like, when you felt ready to. It was cool to see. Right. And it was cool to see you, like, take on that responsibility that young. And that kind of, like, I just want to say, like, that, like, I was like, okay, like, you know, like, you need to be mature and like, I don't know. I just, yeah. I, I saw it. No, I, I, it was I appreciate cool. that. That, that feels like really good to hear. So yeah. in those moments you like feel like I'm like an outcast of my friends. Cause like you were like one, one of the of first friends, ones to have a Yeah. Like obviously there's Derek dad. and stuff. Like he had his kids young and whatever. Uh-huh. And uh, like in like our group though, like my friend group from high school, like McCoy got married early. Mm-hmm. Mitch got married recently. But like we've had like long term relationships, but nobody ever had a thought of a kid. Yeah. So like when people would hang out and stuff and they'd be like, Hey, we're all getting together on this and I'm like, I got a kid. Like I can't. I can't. Like the first while it was hard to swallow the pill of like, oh, my life's different. Uh huh. But after like a while and like the way being around the family and like having a kid and doing like, okay, well when they go do stuff, let's do something here that's going to get us as excited as we would be if we went and did stuff with our friends Mm -hmm. whatever and like that's more of an like a different kind of excitement that Mm -hmm. you can't match whether it's anything to do with your friends like that is you get might get more excited for my daughter completing a cartwheel than i (laughs) ever did for us winning playoff games in football like and it's the smallest little things too like she tried new food that's the coolest thing in the world like Like, now you have a new favorite food Uh and like yeah, sure. We won a state championship in track, whatever, right? Uh huh. That was like in the moment. That was the coolest thing ever. Yeah. Now every little thing the kids do, it's like, oh, this is like, uh huh, my purpose. You're like this is my. <laughs> and purpose now all in of our life. friends are like having kids, and it's like, oh, it's fun because now like watching you like become a dad, yeah. it's sick. Like it's so fun. Like everything you're saying right now, like when you start talking about him, I can see like your eyes light up, uh-huh. but also you're like. I have no idea what's going on. Dude, yeah, that's why I started <laughs> this. I'm terrifying. like, I have no idea what's going on. I'm sure a ton of other guys are out there that don't know what the... Nobody does. So, and like, that was cool because like, when I was having a kid, like, I knew Derek and a couple of kids that had kids, but like, I was like, I knew you that like took that responsibility. It's like, okay, it's all right. Like, you know, I saw oh, yeah. Casey take that responsibility and just do it. Like, that's what I got to do. Yeah. So, yeah, that was a big inspiration. It's, I just wanted to tell you, like... I appreciate that. That's yeah, that was a cool awesome. thing. Yeah, it's... Best thing that ever happened to you. Um, yeah. The rest of your life, you get a, and like, we're young, right? Our kids are going to be out of the house before we're like old and don't want to do anything with our wives. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> not that like I'm looking forward to that. Cause like, obviously like with my parents, like we're still over there multiple times a week. Uh-huh. Like, I don't want my kids to just be like, oh, okay, well now you're out of the house. Like mm-hmm. never going to see us again. We're going to be traveling. Yeah. But like, it is exciting knowing that like, all right, I'm 24 I have a five-year-old like 13 years. She's going to be going to college and I'm only going to be 37. I'll be the young dad. Yeah. Like, that's gonna I'm not be even going to be 40 and I could like be traveling the world with no kid in the house. Yeah. Like, that's, that's what I'm excited yeah, for is like, to be the young parent. Like right. my buddy Zach said it. He's like, Oh yeah, I got three kids. I'm 24. Like that's crazy. Ready to, I right? know. Right. Right. But it's like some people are like, Oh, I want to wait till I'm 40 to have, or like thirties or this or that to have a kid and have a house. I'm like, bro, you ain't going to be ready. Right. Like, then like you won't be ready financially house whatever like you may as well just have kids now right and like not crazy in the sense of like you're crazy for having them crazy in the sense that like 
that's your family and that's like you're 24 25 and you already know like the rest of your life you have your wife your three kids and that's it forever Mm -hmm. you know until your kids start having kids like you're 24 and you already know your whole like the next 25 years of your life dude yeah and it's like that pushes me more than anything ever did like, I was like, oh, I want to do this or be rich or do that. And, like, as a kid, everybody says that. Like, oh, I'm going to make it to the NFL. Yeah. You know, like, no. But, like, once you see your kid and you're like, I got to provide for this, that's gave me the biggest, right. it like. It makes me not want to, like, take my time to go, like, I mean, obviously, I want to do things that I want to do. Yeah. And I want to, like, succeed in things that I want to do because those things directly correlate to, like, me being able to have time to raise my kids. But it makes me put a lot of things that, like, selfishly I want to do. Like, oh, I want to go on a week-long camping trip to go fishing Mm -hmm. i don't want to do that anymore i want to figure out if my daughter wants to go like do something for a week you know like all of my things that i want to do are all now all like things i don't even care about because i want to do what she wants to do that or like find a way to like include them in it and then see them light up and then it's like oh i don't know if my friends would like be cool with me bringing a kid well then i don't know if they're your friends bro like find friends that are like oh yeah like bring your kid like Yeah. yeah Or like, oh, yeah, well, I could bring my kids. We'll all bring the families, yeah, you know? Then like you get 10 uncles and aunts. <laughs> yeah, then you know the people you're going to be around and, you know? Right. Grow your family with, grow your relationships yeah. with, and so. your kids grow up together. That's the best thing. Yeah, that's the coolest thing I've been learning and thinking about lately, so. Yeah, it's awesome. But anyway, it's another episode. Yeah. I don't it's know what that us. is. But <laughs> Time I'll, end, that's what it means. What does that say? I'll film an outro. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, perfect. So the end of this won't have a uh, won't have video, and that's okay. But thank you for coming. Yeah. I really appreciate you coming on. I appreciate we'll have you to have having me on me. again. Yeah, anytime, man. So it schedule's freeing up. So let me know when. Then mm-hmm. we got football starting soon. So I know I'm excited. Heck yeah, buddy. Hell yeah. Well, see you guys next week. Thanks for tuning in.